Welcome back to Friday Park Day! And in my previous video, I said something along the lines of I need to make a car that is incredibly light like this one. I wanna make a car like this that is this light to go up Pikes Peak one day. That would be amazing. So what we're doing today is we're going to pick the smallest body possible, which... I mean, I don't want to use a mod body because those things are bugged as hell most of the time. So we're going to go with the mini body. Very similar to that other one that I did a while ago. Ooh, I could do a mini van. That looks very small. But we'll leave that for another day. Today we are doing the mini. It's a little two meter long car and very narrow. You know what? Maybe it's not that narrow. It is actually quite square. What is the ratio here? No, no, it is quite narrow. Track width is only 1.25 compared to 1.9. Nine, but yikes. And this is going to be the lightest car possible. So we're going to uh, bring this up to 2020. It's going to be carbon fiber, a monocoque, carbon fiber. I, I want to see how much I can get from the lightest car possible. We're going to try for a rear longitudinal here. Which one is the lightest? A McPherson strut? Yes. Okay, McPherson strut it is. Or McPherson, I'm not sure. A new project here. And this is going to be the lightest three cylinder we can get, which is just under 300 cc's. Now, now, luckily our heads don't weigh anything, so we're just gonna go with the most possible. And these should be lighter, right? Yes, billet steel is lighter. And lightweight, both there. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do sliders. Yeah, quality sliders. We gotta spam the hell out of this thing. Up that quality. Cam profile, all the way up cam profile quality. No turbos, because that weighs extra weight. Injection, direct injection. Oh, there is a weight difference here, but no, per cylinder is lighter. And as for the intakes, we got 0 0.9, 0 0.5, five and zero. So zero it is. Now, which is the lightest here? Two, one, three, two, 1.6, 1.1 and 1.0. So long tubular it is. None, none and none. Quality. Oh, this engine doesn't fit in the rear. Bugger. I mean, I could go for a flat four, but I want this to be lighter than that. Is there a weight difference? It does weigh more. That's unfortunate. So we're going to stick with that, but we're going to change the engine placement back to the front. And because we are running with such a low amount of power and the fact that we want to have the axle right against the engine, we're going to go with front transverse and we are going to run this as a front wheel drive even though i would love to put a mid-engine like right here that would be fantastic all right how much power can we get out of this behemoth weight being the only thing of concern here god damn this thing likes to rev are we gonna fully compress yeah so this has got full 15 to 1 compression ratio and we're not getting anything else really out of spark that's worth mentioning it's just, it's just basically moving numbers around a little bit so we're not using all of our rod but 38 kilowatts, not the worst number in the world. What does our little buzz box sound like? It sounds like it's knocking. That's what it sounds like. God damn, that's loud. All right, let's uh, do a little bit of valve cover work here. 90s space age valve cover, wrinkle yellow. There we go. We have our yellow engine. Oh, that that looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. This thing is also going to be incredibly unstable because it's a three cylinder high revving. That's not a happy engine. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so which one is the smallest? Probably just that one, right? You might be able to get a little bit lighter with this one, but we'll finish the car and then we'll go back and check that because it all comes down to lightness. Front wheel drive and the lightest is manual, but I do like sequential, but no, we want the lightest. So we're going with manual and probably a four speed because this thing is not going to be particularly fast. In fact, I doubt it'll reach 200. Is there weights here? There is. And they all weigh exactly the same. So we're going to go with an electronic LSD. Radials, semi-slicks. They don't need to be particularly big in the rear. We're going to go bigger wheels. Doesn't matter if we lose a little bit of uh, width here. Carbon fiber, carbon ceramics. But I suppose these carbon ceramics are not uh, really small. So, I mean, I'm not going entirely low weight. I'm going low weight in performance. Oh my goodness. Straight off the bat without having to do much tuning, this thing already has a really good speed before it starts to understeer. So it's understeering at about 84, which is better than usually where it's just dead on 80. Okay, so our top speed is 163. So we could have a little bit higher, but do we really need it to be any higher? Probably not. I think acceleration is the big key here, especially considering that this thing is incredibly light. All right, we also need to actually flare this out. Something I wanted to avoid, but eh, it seems that we can't really avoid it. For some reason, I can't make my front tires wider. And it's doing that 
stupid thing again where it's, it's bugged out. God damn it, game. Wow, this thing doesn't want to uh, oversteer at all, does it? Now, nice. Okay, stock standard without any aero. What is our lap time? 227. Not bad, but such a pitiful amount of power. How much does it weigh though? 290 kilos. 290.1. If we put on less than 20 kilos with a turbo, I think we'll go with a turbo. Wow, this does not give much extra power, does it? Well, let's see how much extra weight we put on. A 307. So it does put on less than 20 kilos. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with the turbo here. All right, we're up to 52 kilowatts now. And still our weight is less than 20 kilos. It is really a lot of weight for just a turbo. They reckon that this turbo weighs about 16 kilos, which is a lot of weight. But now we do have a lot more speed apparently and our zero to 60 or zero to 100 has gone down from about seven seconds to a 5.7 seconds. So that's good. Though if we go dual clutch. Oh wait, dual clutch only weighs an extra two kilos. Yeah, let's do that then. We're down to 5.3 seconds. I like it. All right, what's our new lap time? Two minutes, 27, two minutes, 17. Nice. <laughs> Oh boy. We are gonna have to put just a smidgen bit of air on one of those. Only just a little bit though. Is this so way overweight? So what happens if we drop that weight down? Oh wow, they do get really heavy. If I drop the quality of the brakes down to standard, it puts on 15 kilos almost. Damn. So we'll stay with the high quality brakes. Time to pick a color. If we go with a light color, does that mean the car is lighter? So something like a white. <laughs> A little bit of British racing green on it, just because. Wait, maybe we should do the bonnet too. All right, let's get to designing. So here we have it, the final version. Wait, no, hold on. We're gonna put on aerodynamics. That's right, hold on, give me a second. There we go. Now with a little bit of aerodynamics to add on to that. They're much better. Okay, let's have a look. Still reckons we're gonna get a crazy oversteer, but that's fine. Let's turn that up a bit. Hopefully that'll be enough. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But our top speed isn't that high anyway. It reckons that it's gonna start oversteering at about 200 kilometers an hour. I can't even hit 200 kilometers an hour, so that's not really an issue, is it? Oh dear. What does automation reckon this time? 217, 216, and god damn, this engine is loud. I do like how funky this thing is. It's really fun. Right, well, I had to bring this back and forth a few times. One of the first things that was the issue is the rear tires were popping. Then I realized that I forgot to put in tail lights, so we popped in some tail lights. But now the tires aren't popping, the rear tail lights are on, the downforce seems fairly even, there's no oversteer too much or understeer too much. So let's go take this over to the map. If you're playing along, we're doing the Devil's Playground short version on Bitumen. So much wheel spin! Ah! Ah, shit! What the hell? What is this crazy amount of oversteer I'm getting there now? All right, I, I can't deal with this. This is too much. Back to the drawing board. I guess we've made the rear tires a little bit smaller. Sorry, a little bit bigger. And we're gonna add a little bit more downforce on the rear. And we might thicken this wing out a little bit. I get the feeling that more downforce is going to really help. Hopefully that'll do the trick. God damn it. Always inwards. What the hell? Always inwards. What is up with the instability of this car? I know there's a weight difference, but dang, bro. Oh, I just, it's unavoidable. It is completely unavoidable in this car. Something is wrong. Come on, ABS, do your job. No, you cannot break. So yeah, I just need really fat tires in the rear. Unavoidable. We really don't want to add a whole lot of downforce here because that kind of defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do today. So yeah, we're going to put on even front and rear tires, which is not something I was thinking of doing, but I suppose I don't really have a choice. All right time to play with the brakes. So I don't want to play with the brakes primarily because it can cause big issues. God, I don't want them to be too small. Otherwise they'll cook really quickly. Damn it. Hopefully having considerably less brakes on the rear now will help and ABS will be able to deal with this just a little bit better. But that's a big if. I wonder what test track says now. What were we down to like a two minutes 17? Uh, still exactly the same. Let's hope to God this time it does a better job. Oh God. Oh yes, it's already more controllable, except we've got understeer, so maybe we'll have to make those rear tires narrower again. Much better. You know what? We're gonna go in and make those rear tires a bit narrower. That should do it. You can see that the rear brakes are minutes, like the brakes fill up that one. 
The rear brakes, you can barely see them. Ah. Uh, well, the steering doesn't like me. Oh boy. Whoa, torpedo! Oh! Jesus. Oh, that's a slow time. Is that my slowest so far? Oh, nearly. <laughs> oh no, that's pretty bad. Let's try that again, shall we? This time, maybe without the crash in the middle of it. But the next issues here are not entirely my fault. Some sort of glitch happened that meant no matter what I was doing, sometimes it would just stop me with... <laughs> what, I... Before it even started, an impact detected? Yeah, it's just showing up impact detections all the time, and I don't know what was happening. What is... God damn it! So, I mean, I was trying, I was pushing, I just don't know what the issue was. All right, is there a setting I can turn off? What is this? I, j I can't find anything. Yep, that's right. I could not find a setting to turn off this automatic stopping after impact detected. It just kept happening and getting worse. <sighs> so angry right now. But eventually I did get a lap down. I just kind of nursed the car a little bit, trying to be as smooth and nice as possible, but it would still stop me in the middle of the road sometimes, but I was determined. I knew how to handle this car by now, just not how to handle the glitch, and we were finally able to put down a decent lap. Now this car is slow. By the end of this, it, I think it goes like 160 or 170. This is not a fast car. As you see here, we're right at the end. Okay, it only reached 150. 52. Now I can go a little bit faster than that, but I have to perfect the first corner, which is something I could only do maybe like 70% of the time. I didn't perfect it this time round, but with the impact detections, I was not willing to restart. Go through there at a full blast. The fastest I was able to go through there was 122. So I would have been able to go to this part a little bit faster. So you're gonna see that I break maybe a little bit more than what I should have. There's my braking mark, but here I'm braking much later because one, the car is much lighter and you don't need to brake for as long, but two, Two, also the fact that you're just not going that fast, which was something to get really used to because you have to learn these new braking points. Your car isn't any better. It's just braking later because it's so much slower. I suppose I can't complain too much because by the end of this, like the slowest lap there was what, three minutes? This is a massive, fr oh, sorry, not a massive, a, a minuscule fraction of how much power the other ones have, like 1600 horsepower and they're only doing about 20 seconds faster. That is a huge difference, but still, I just, I was not able to get quite as much out of this as what I was hoping. I was hoping that the corners would be a lot better. The real advantage of having a lighter car is not really much else other than the fact that you can put on softer tires without it actually destroying the tires, but we just don't have that option in automation. And unfortunately, automation makes what they want to play, not what all of their customers are saying, hey, this is what we want. I'm sorry that you want something different, but well, unless Unless somebody actually here knows how to make a different game or a better game depending on how you outlook on things i think automation is fairly good it's just they're a bit ah, misguided naive maybe who knows whatever i still love the game but here you can see that i'm doing a pretty decent lap if i was to go over this a hundred more times i might be able to improve a little bit but i am doing pretty darn well though being very soft on the brakes i found if i did a solid full brake the car would spin out so i would start with like a medium brake go to maybe 80 percent sometimes and then bring it back to about a 20 percent for the rest of the brakes it still did a pretty good job there we go we knocked off about 10 seconds but still this thing is way down there which means that my theory of antitheses of certain types of cars so maximum power say for like the winged shooter the maximum low-end torque of the electric cars that i made and the minimum weight that this car is means that none of them compare to just good downforce so this basically means that weight means nothing as long as you have good suspension and then downforce on top of that is all just cream on top of that crop but we are ahead of the hyper uh, we're just behind the hypermiler but only by one second that's not a great sign honestly because that thing also was quite light did i even put downforce yeah no i did put downforce in that car no no we're good but yeah now we are way behind so many different things.
God, I love the turbo lag on that Paterni Pikes Peak. Anyway, guys, I think we might try at least a couple of times to do the full racetrack just for the hell of it. Oh, come on. I give up. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I am exhausted. I am tired. I am still actually sick. This is not a great time for me, but I really do like making these videos, which is why even though I'm sick, I'm still making them. But if you guys have enjoyed today's content and this is the sort of content you like and you're not subscribed, please help me get to a thousand subscribers. But for now, I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye.